Welcome to 21st and Prime, presented by Jaguar. It's getting real close to Christmas. There's a lot of teams out there giving out gifts right now. And I ain't happy about it. Well, Amber, can you help me, please? They're giving them to defenses because defenses have been balling in the Seahawks last night, Dion, on Monday Night Football. They held the Vikings scoreless for 58 minutes last night. The final stat line for Kirk Cousins, 20 of 33 for 208 yards and a touchdown. But that only mattered in fantasy football. He had a passer rating of 89. Now the Vikings, they have seen enough. Earlier this morning, they fired offensive coordinator John Filippo, let's say hello to Mike Garofolo. What more can you tell us about this Vikings coaching move today? Amber, 274 rushing attempts for the Vikings. That's 31st in the league. That is not what Mike Zimmer wants from his offense. And that's why they made the move away from John Filippo, who was trying to be creative about some of the things he did to substitute for a running game. In the end, it wasn't working out. But I, I saw things, and the broadcast team on Monday was quick to point them out that were not necessarily on the offensive coordinator. I'm talking drop footballs. I'm talking receivers that Kirk Cousins didn't see open, an offensive line that just wasn't getting a push. I don't know if this is going to be a quick fix prime with Kevin Stefanski, the quarterback's coach, becoming the OC. I would expect Zimmer to be much more involved in the offense, though. Well, I'm thinking he, he's hoping that the same thing that happened with Cleveland and now you see the emergence of Baker Mayfield, that they have an effect the same way. I don't think it's going to be a quick fi fix either, Mike. I, I agree with you 100%. But it's simply stupid not to run with the type of backs that you have. I, I got the feeling that since you pay Kurt Cousins so much darn guaranteed money that you're trying to justify it. How can you throw for 200 yards when you got two Pro Bowl caliber receivers. I mean, you got a you, you you got a passing game that that should be amongst the top in the league. But I feel as though your quarterback is not making proper decisions. Yeah, your line isn't great, but they're not bad either. This offense has underachieved since day one. All right, Mike, hang tight for just one second because I need to ask Dion. Dion, you've been riding with your guy Mike Zimmer since day one, but. Look at this scenario right now. They would have to win out the rest of the way, and the Bears would have to lose out for the Vikings to take the NFC North. Prime, 14 weeks you've hung with them, but please tell me you are ready to concede the North to the Bears. You know, it's an old country saying, it's like you got to know when to hold them. Know, <laughs> know when, when to fold them. them. Yeah, I know that you one. You know when to walk away. <laughs> I'm gone. I I'm out. <laughs> this is it. Uh, it's over. I, I, I cannot ride with him anymore. I love my Zimmer. You know that immensely. But this team is, has underachieved. I thought they were poised to challenge again for the NFC Championship game. All right. So with the win, the Seahawks are now sitting pretty in that number five seed. They create a one and a half game cushion over the Vikings in the wild card race. But Dion, run the ball, play defense. That has always been the recipe for winning in the playoffs. How dangerous can the Seahawks be in the postseason? Because they do both. They, they can run the ball well. And what I'm seeing that I'm really liking, first of all, Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson. Russell's last name, Wilson. He always gives you an opportunity to win. But this defense is coming back. Those fourth, I mean, that goal line stance last night was phenomenal. The way they're getting after the passer, the way they are attacking the point of contact, these guys have ripped it back up, and they're playing the way the Seahawks once played when they had that wonderful secondary that I adored so much. Here's my concern, though. That Vikings win was really their first quality win. If you look at who they've lost to, they've lost to the Chargers, they've lost to the Bears, and they've lost to the Rams twice. They still face the Chiefs in Week 16, so that will be a test going into the playoffs. Let's head to the ATL, your area. The Falcons just lost to the Packers, who fired their head coach, Mike McCarthy, a week ago. That came as a surprise to many people, so it's fair to wonder if Dan Quinn is now on the hot seat in Atlanta. Mike G, jump back in here and tell us what do you know about Quinn's safety and also that of his staff because it seems like coordinators are getting fired left and right this season. Yeah, Amber, I'm taking him right off of that hot seat. Dan Quinn is going nowhere. I have had conversations with people familiar with Arthur Blank's thinking on this one. He is safe. Uh, so is Thomas Dimitrov, the general manager. Blank still believes in these guys who nearly brought him a Super Bowl championship uh, and lost to the Super Bowl champions last year on a fourth down throw to Julio Jones. But that play was called by Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator. I'm watching to see what the Falcons do with him and defensive coordinator Marquand Manuel because Dan Quinn told the media on Monday he is evaluating everything. Prime, are you available? Would you like one of those two jobs? 
Uh, now, if I'm going to get a job, it's going to be a head coach. I'm not going to be an uh, accessory <laughs> for nothing. Let, let me tell you something. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Dan Quinn, I think he's safe. I, as a matter of fact, I don't think I know he's safe because of the, the defense was decimated with injuries. I mean, you got two safeties, a linebacker. These are some of your perennial, perennial like Pro Bowl caliber players that you're missing. You cannot replace those. You, you only have, what, a roster of 53. You can't replace those type of guys that you lost. Now, offensively. That's where I have a problem. And I'm going to go back to I don't like the way they're treating Julio, man. I, I just don't. I, I don't know how in the world is your quarterback who's not amongst the top five. And I love Matt Ryan. Guys in the league at his position could make double the amount of money that Julio arguably one of the best, arguably the best at his position. I don't understand that. And I'm sick of it. I said this before on the show. I'm sick of us paying the position and not the player. Let's pay the player. And that's it. Stop paying the position. These quarterbacks are making too much darn money, and some of them are not darn worth it. A wise man once said it must be the money. Thanks, Mike G. We'll see you next week. Coming up on 24.